Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Over the past several years, I've done four different videos demonstrating how to do selective color in Lightroom Classic. Now, as you probably know, over the past couple years, Adobe has added a lot of new masking to Lightroom Classic. Because of that, those videos I've done in the past are pretty much obsolete. So in today's video, I want to demonstrate how to do selective color in Lightroom Classic. And what I'm going to show you will also apply to the cloud version of Lightroom and to Adobe Camera Raw. Our first image is going to be an image I actually used in one of those previous videos. For this image, I would like the cardinal to be in color, but I want everything else in black and white. So what I recommend you do first is any global adjustments you need to do. In this case, I cropped it. You can see I tightened up the crop quite a bit. And I went to the basic tab and I did some tone adjustments and some texture and clarity. And that was pretty much it. Now I'd like to do my selective color. So we need to do masking. We need to mask parts of the image that we want in black and white. Most often, what you'll find, it's easier to start out masking the part you want in color because the part you want in color is usually the subject of the image. So we're going to open up masking and we'll click on subject. And you can see that it will select the cardinal, but it over selected, it selected this branch and this one over here and a little bit of the tail underneath the tail on the rock. So we need to subtract from this selection. To do that, just click on subtract, go to brush. I would uh, recommend that you have flow and density at 100, uh, feathering somewhere towards the middle. Size, you could change the size of the brush with this slider or you could use the bracket keys. The right bracket key makes it larger, left bracket key smaller, or if you have a wheel on your mouse, spin that wheel and you'll make it larger or smaller. The Apple Magic Mouse, just drag your finger on it. You could resize that brush that way. Then come in and just remove it from where you want it. Now, what you may find, see how I'm having a hard time getting it removed there? Because I have Auto Mask on. Turn Auto Mask off and you'll be a better work. It will work better. When you want Auto Mask on is when you have an area like here by the tail. I don't want to remove it from the tail, but I want to remove it from the rock that is directly below the tail. So I'll turn on Auto Mask. When Auto Mask is active, what will happen when I click with my left mouse button, uh, Lightroom will look at the tone texture and color of exactly where I clicked, and it will try to then only remove the mask from similar tone texture and color. And you can see that it did a pretty good job. Now, I have a red overlay, the Cardinal's red, so I can't be 100% sure that I have a really good mask. So what I can do is change the color of the overlay. To do that, click on the swatch, and just click on a color that contrasts a little better. And you can see that it's a pretty good mask. Um, the legs of the bird aren't selected, but that's okay. The legs are gray. There's no color there anyway, so I'm not worried about that. So I think it, this is pretty good. So I'm going to go back to the original red overlay. Now, what we need to do, though, is remove the color from everywhere else. So what we're going to need to do is invert this mask. Unfortunately, because I subtracted from it, if I just click this checkbox, it won't invert properly. So you can't invert it that way when you used either a subtract or an add uh, mask. In this case, I used a subtract brush. What you need to do if you have used a subtract or add mask is go up to where it says mask one, click the three dots, and click on invert mask one. And you'll see that now it's inverted. Everything is selected except the bird. Go to color, take saturation all the way down. Now, any global adjustments you do from this point on will be working globally. So remember that. So if you add sharpening, it's going to sharpen everywhere. If you want to just work on the bird, let's say, what I recommend you do instead of going through this whole ritual again by getting a new mask, a new subject mask, then subtracting from it, it's faster. Just go to mask one, click the three dots and go down to um, duplicate and invert mask right here. I was looking right at it and couldn't see it. And you'll see now we have a selection of the cardinal all by itself. So now what we can do is we could do things here. I could like bring saturation up the cardinal. See how it's only affecting the cardinal. I could maybe go to effects and add some texture and some clarity, go to detail, just over sharpen this cardinal like crazy. And there you go. So there's one way to do selective color. 
The subject mask usually works pretty good, but you notice when I use the subject mask on that cardinal, it did overselect. If I use the subject mask on this bird, it's going to overselect. You could see how it selected the stick going up and down and over in here. What may be a better choice is an object mask. So I'm going to delete this mask. And instead of using the subject mask, I'll use an object mask. And there's two different ways you could apply this mask. You could apply it with a brush or you could draw a rectangle over the subject. Let's try that rectangle. So I'm going to go over to the tail here a little bit and just draw this rectangle over the bird itself. And when I let go, you can see it was a better selection. It is a better selection than the subject mask, but it's still overselected a little bit. So I need to subtract from this with the subtract brush. Now again, I'll take auto, or maybe I'll leave auto mask on. And then I'll come in and I'll remove it from this reed or stick or whatever going up here. And I'll remove it from over in here. And around there, get a smaller brush. And that looks pretty good. Now, again, because I used a subtract brush, I cannot just click this checkbox. It won't invert properly. You can see it just selected part of the read there. So we can't do it that way. We need to go up to mask one, click the three dots, invert mask one. Now everything is selected except the bird. And again, we'll go to color and we'll take saturation all the way down. All right. Now let's about the subject mask again. Let's just try it on this. All right. When I do it, it selected the, the leaf okay, but it overselected here. Is there a better way? Well, let's try that object mask. So we're going to delete this mask. But instead of the rectangle, because actually, let me show you. If we do the object mask and I go to that rectangle again, in this case, it may be more of a square, and I go around the leaf, you can see that it's going to be pretty similar to the subject mask it selected over here. So we're going to delete that. We're still going to use this object mask, but instead of doing the rectangle, we'll use the brush. The brush is more precise, and all you need to do is go around the perimeter of the, in this case, the part we want in color. Okay, so just like this. So we'll go around the outside like this. You don't have to be precise. You can see how I'm going outside the lines. I'm like going badly outside the lines. So we'll come all the way around, then just get some of the middle part too, so that Lightroom knows that you pretty much want this entire leaf masked. You don't have to color everything. I'm just going to do that. And then you'll see our mask is perfect for this one. Now, because I do not need to use an add or subtract mask, in this case, usually I was using the subtract brush, I could invert this the more conventional way by just clicking on the little check bar, then going to color and taking saturation all the way down. And I'd like to do some editing just to the leaf. So I'm going to go to mask, click the three dots, I'm going to duplicate, duplicate and invert that mask. Now we just have the leaf selected and I'm going to take saturation up. So we're going to really make it look super colorful against the black and white uh, surroundings. So there's that. Now there's the subject mask. There's the object mask. You could use any mask available in Lightroom to do selective color. Now I'm going to warn you, this is going to look ridiculous, but I just want to show you that you could really use any mask. Let's say... I want everything in black and white except the yellow flowers. So what we're going to do is instead of using like a subject or anything like that, go to range. Let's do a color range. You'll get an eyedropper. Click on the yellow of the yellow flowers. You see we have a mask. What you can do is then go to this refine slider and you can move this around to try to better refine your selection. I don't mind if the, like the stems are selected a little bit. So I'm going to move it to the right just to make sure that I have all the yellow selected. Now I need to invert this. Now because I didn't use an add or subtract mask, I could do it the conventional way by just clicking the invert button. And then I'll go to saturation and I'll take it all the way down. Now I told you that it would look ridiculous, but it gives you an idea that you could use any mask available. Let's try one more. Uh, there's this image here. Um, what I'd like to do is I'd like everything in black and white except this kind of yellowish green um, 
flower in the middle. So these brown ones and everything else I want in black and white. So I think for this, that object mask will work well and the brush would work best. I could get a very precise adjustment or, or I, I'm sorry, get a very precise mask this way by just brushing around the outside of this little puff flower here, like this, like that, like that. Then I come in and just do the middle a little bit so everything gets selected. And then let go. And bam, there's our selection. That's pretty good. And we're going to invert it because I didn't use a add or subtract mask with this mask. I could click this little checkbox there. And then I could go to saturation, take that all the way down. Now I'd like to do some editing just to this. Um, what I can do is go to this mask one again, click those three dots, duplicate and invert the mask. So now we have a second mask that is the exact subject, the color subject. And then I could come in and go to effects and add some texture and some clarity and just like make it look crazy too sharp over the top sharp sharp. Now again, any global adjustments you do will affect everything. So if I went to the basic tab and I, I did exposure, it's going to affect everything. Just so you understand that. And, you know, even vibrance, I had vibrance up. It's vibrance because the image is in black and white, it won't add color like saturation. It's not going to add color to the background, but it will affect the tone of the background. See how it's doing that? Of course, if I take it all the way down, it's going to make the entire image black and white. So you could come in here and play with these. You might want to affect that tone of that background a little bit differently by moving the saturation slider, but you could experiment with it. And the key thing I want you to remember here is that you don't have to always use the sub subject or object mask. You could use any of the masks. And most often it's easiest to select the part you want in color because usually the part you want in color is the subject of the image. So it's a little easier to select that and then invert it. And just remember that if you add an add or subtract mask to your mask, that you'll have to invert it by hitting the three dots and going down to invert that way because the check box won't work. So just remember that. And that is selective color in Lightroom Classic. But what I showed you also applies to the cloud version of Lightroom and to Adobe Camera Raw. Thank you. Everyone watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.